Good morning, everybody. Wall Street Jesus here. Another Saturday sweep series coming off um, a fantastic week. If you are a bull, if you can actively trade, um, we pretty much spoke about what there was a high probability of what might take place this past week. Um, and it did. And again, it were, had nothing to do with trying to forecast the market, predict what may happen. Um, we know that when the sentiment stuff we look at shows that most of the public money out there, most of the public trading money out there is nervous, is selling, is getting out of the market, is buying VIX related stuff, is betting on more downside. Okay, when all that sentiment reaches an extreme over the short term. And we see signs that the smart money out there who trade professionally, who have an edge in this game, they may not win all the time, but they do this for a living. We know they have an edge is playing the complete other side. Okay. And in simple English, what that meant was again, an elevated put the call. Okay. Uh, some of the retail sentiment stuff, those of you who are members that we like to look at religiously every day in, day out, looking for extremes, all were signaling that the public was at the least, if not looking or betting on further downside, scrambling for protection. Okay. And then what we had was there was a little buying that came in Thursday. Okay. Really didn't convince us yet very selective buying and then missiles came flying in friday as you guys remember uh micron one of the names right that really got our attention uh several other names caught action there was a huge squeeze into the bell and if you remember we were talking about um there were two ways the market could go okay everybody who missed that rally who was too nervous or caught short off that Friday rally, okay, they were hoping more than anything else, okay? They weren't looking at what may happen based on sentiment or flow. Basically, they got caught off guard Friday or short Friday, and they were hoping that there would be a retest. And it became even more convincing over the weekend for anybody who's on social media or turns on Bloomberg, CNBC, Everybody and their mother talking about a retest, right? What normally happens is a retest of the 200 day. What normally happens is a retest of the lows. Okay. So as a couple of us were hearing that really a bill to a frenzy over the weekend, um, you could almost smell that monster runaway, runaway squeeze coming this past week. Okay, and if you guys remember, we were talking about that. You know, we were talking about that weakness from that point Friday. Weakness is now an opportunity. If you see a sell off, it's not a time to scramble, put on protection, not a time to sell, stop yourself out. You look, you look at weakness as an opportunity for another entry. Okay, if we had the luxury of that. And the interesting part about early this week, I don't know if you guys remember because the monster rally created a blur, um, but there was some weakness. Uh, we came in Monday, the market gapped up and they sold off that rally. I don't know if you guys remember, they sold off that rally and then buyers just came in and scooped up that little fade. Like we've never seen before. And something similar happened. I think on Tuesday, I don't think they pushed it into the red, but they faded the early rally. And then from that point on, um, yeah, she was just gone. Okay. And that's where you get this. Okay. So again, now without a plan, without looking at certain things, right? Certain signals that you have confidence in you're caught off guard. Like a lot of traders are out there. And now what we're seeing over the short term has been the complete opposite. It goes from 
fear, extreme bearishness, right? Follow through on the downside to now or retest. Then we're hearing retest to now FOMO, fear of missing out on this huge rally that's never come back to test. Okay, so that's what we saw towards the end of the week. Okay, so you get that slingshot back and then you get that chase. All right. So now if we fast forward to where we are today and we'll go over some of the flow and we'll go over a lot of the sentiment stuff. I wanted to do that uh, together with you guys so we can look at that stuff uh, and I can explain to you what we're seeing there. You got to understand, we're not in that sweet spot anymore. We can't be. We can't be for several, several obvious reasons. One, the, the sweet spot was occurring when everybody was extremely bearish, selling, getting stopped out, betting on further downside, and the smart money was buying. Okay. Now, the opposite is happening, not the opposite completely, where the smart money is selling into the retail buying, but we got retail feeling bullish or at least feeling like they're missing out on this rally and they want to participate. Evidence of that. I don't know if you guys, if you guys uh, saw the number of uh, inflows that came out late this week, they went from all in at the top to record withdrawals, right? They withdrew a ton of money after the pullback and now inflows again. Think about that for a second. Up here, all in. They get caught in this. They sell everything they put in and then some down here. And now they're coming back here, coming back into the market. All right. And this market, here's the unfortunate part. All right. And I, again, if you guys remember me telling you this, anybody who's been trading for a decent amount of time can vouch for it. This all has happened in this this day and age quicker than i've ever seen before this used to take weeks and months to play out it happens now boom snap of a finger so it's good and bad all right the good thing is the quicker it happens you know you can make the play on it catch a nice big move cash in your chips and it's actually less risk when it happens quicker, in my opinion. Okay. But what happens is a lot of traders want more, right? They never have enough. Damn, I didn't buy enough down there. You know what I mean? Because it happened so quick. And I get it. But you have to try to tame that emotion. Okay. Because if you think of it logically, just logically, you can't weigh this sweet spot opportunity down here as much as you're going to weigh your positions and entries up here after a move like this. It just doesn't make sense. All right. So now what we're seeing is doesn't mean this market has to roll over and break lows or test lows. No, we have no idea. We have no idea. At this point, no clue. Okay. And again, some of the stuff that we rely on, some of the signals we rely on now aren't even there for us anymore. Okay. But all we do know is we've come a pretty long way here off that mark. We've been up every single day. Okay. And this is not a spot, regardless if we go straight to new highs, this is not a spot that you want to get crazy at. Okay. What are some of the things we, we can see that would end up setting it up nicely again for us? Maybe there's some choppy consolidation here, right? Where we get some selling and all of a sudden all those bulls become bears again, right? Cause they're not finding any success or there's some news out there. There's a headline out there that gets them all revved up. Okay, maybe we 
chop around, grind higher. Maybe there's some decent volatility in between where the rally is not that easy and brushes off some of that shorter term bullish sentiment. Okay. But even more importantly, maybe there's some sector rotation leadership that comes out of this. That's, that's what I'm looking forward to. Okay. If you guys remember that, was the second stage of this that I was really looking forward to because this usually happens quick, especially this day and age. Now I'm hoping we go into, you know, a normalcy stage again where not everything is moving up and down together for no reason whatsoever. You know, maybe the smart money starts to focus on some of the commodity names and leave some of the hot stuff alone to breathe. I mean, we saw, again, there was some news behind it, but if you look at like um, U.S. Steel, did you see that move on Friday? I know it caught me off guard. Luckily, there were some members who took advantage of it, but it caught me completely off guard. This is new highs here. All the steel names that have looked so good with a ton of action all back at new highs already. You know, so maybe now, hopefully, as we're coming out of earnings season two, we'll have, it becomes more of a stock picker's market type of thing. Okay, before, like, if you guys remember, you were asking me about certain symbols, and I kept replying and saying, listen, honestly, Micron caught the best action of the bunch into, you know, those missiles into the weakness. But chances are 90% of the names you're looking at are most likely going to rally hard if we catch that squeeze we're looking for. So it, it almost doesn't matter as much. Now I think there's a chance it matters more. Now, again, the flow can have that edge um, that's made me build the confidence behind my my trading over the years where I can see where the money is going before it becomes obvious to everybody. That's what I'm hoping for. Okay, we haven't seen any signs yet um, towards the end of the week. You know, I was really looking for it, but, you know, you don't want to force the issue either. Um, we've been seeing a variety of names catching decent action yeah not a lot but there's been some tech there's been uh home building you know there's disney so it's it's a broad range of names still and we're not quite done with earnings maybe that has a lot to do we'll see we'll see there's no rush okay but that's where i'm um, right off the bat at the start of this webinar i wanted to make clear that you cannot now weigh this entry up here the same as you did down there. Okay. And I was trying to stress this to members, you know, a couple, there were several members, like many people who had the opportunity to catch the long side of this rally who made decent money. Okay. And I try to preach, but it's going to fall on deaf ears. I know it, especially if this market starts to go higher from here. I'm going to look like an idiot. No one's going to pay attention to me. You know, I know that, but I feel better about myself. Okay. But the money you made off this rally, your job now is to keep a good chunk of it. And then, you know, take baby steps here, take baby steps here. The ideal situation would be some breather here, some consolidation, soften some of that sentiment that FOMO sentiment that's out there. And then we see the, the real flow start to pick up. All right. Yeah, again, you could still, I'm going to be the last person to tell you, just sit and wait and do nothing. You know, we all need to be, stay active to entertain ourselves. Most of us do anyway. Some people can sit in, you know, some runners or smaller positions in cash. And, but just play nice and easy, nice and easy. You know, stick to your rules. If you're looking to stop yourself out, if you're putting what you risk into the option, as far as premium, that's your stop loss. 
make sure you're sized down enough. All right, because you, you don't want to get caught here in something. I mean, there's a lot of room here now. There's a lot of room here. And the biggest difference is, see, here, here's the logic behind it, guys. All right, here's the logic. At this point here, the reason I feel confident and more comfortable about looking for an entry is because I know everybody's all lathered up in puts, in VIX, in protection. Okay, so if they want to take this market a lot lower from here, all those, all that, the riffraff have to get paid. You understand? All that, riff, all that riffraff money that went from long up here to now short down here. If this goes lower from here, they're all going to get paid. So what's the probability and the likelihood of that happening? Okay, so I know that the smart money looks at that as an opportunity. They look at any weakness as a buying opportunity, especially when we get confirmation that the smart money started buying aggressively like they did Friday. That was the cherry on top. They showed us their cards. They're willing to buy this weakness now. Okay, so that's why the sentiment stuff works and the flow stuff works so well together when it does. There's, you know, there's logic behind it. That's the way the game works. That's the way the market works. All right, so now we're up here. And like I said, you have a lot of FOMO now, the complete opposite, right? Now they can take this market down and they're not paying riffraff. If anything, they're going to catch some riffraff. So that's the logic. All right. And we can look at um, some of the sentiment stuff quickly so you know what the hell I'm talking about here. All right. Um, and some of the stuff we've looked at in the past so you know exactly. Here's, let's start with the simple equity put to call. So you know what the hell I'm talking about here. All right. Here's the equity only put the call and you get a major spike. Okay. So like I was just explaining to you right here, there's a major spike in put buying telling us that if they take this market down, if they have, if this market goes down another leg lower from here, decent leg lower, they're going to have to pay these guys. Can that happen? Of course it can happen. But honestly, you can count on probably three, four fingers throughout my 20-year career where that's happened. Again, it's just odds and probability. In 2008, Armageddon, put buyers made some money. Since then, I don't remember it all the time. All right, so that's what we were saying. If it's a 2008 systemic blow-up we have on our hands, we deserve to lose some money. What are we going to do? All right, so now you look at the put the call. And this is normal that it does this, okay? Again, the rally, even though it was a short amount of time, it was a week, was powerful. Okay, so you get a huge rally here, powerful rally, off of this. And now, look where we are. Pretty evident, right? All right, so again, I don't want you guys, I don't play the short side. You know that. Okay. Unless we're in a full-fledged bear market, I don't see the reason to play the short side. If you're intraday trading and all that stuff, 
you know, it's a different ball game. I'm, I'm mostly talking about on the swing side, the position side, and, and that stuff. My puts and all that stuff should be used as protection in bull markets. That's my opinion. Okay. But I'm not trying to say here that this raises red flags where we should go to the short side, but we should take some caution. That's all. We should take some caution. If you see here, we got down, right? We were in extreme bull mode throughout the good chunk of this leg. And the market continued higher. But if you didn't pay attention, you got caught. And look what it always happens. It gives it all back. Always happens that way. Gives the whole entire leg back. All right, but the point I'm trying to make is you can't weigh this entry here. I'm doing my Madden football drawings here. You can't weigh that entry here the same way we are as this entry we have now. So you just got to be smart about it. Let's look at some other things here. I'm having fun with this drawing garbage here. Hold on. All right. Um, let's take another good one, little sentiment trader. Oh, this one's a good one. I like little sentiment trader. Look at this. Okay. You know what this is? I call it degenerate bearish ETF buying. In English, in non-Wall Street Jesus language, it's the leveraged bearish ETF buying. All right? So think about the emotion behind this indicator. Think about that for a second. What, at what state emotionally are you buying leveraged bearish ETFs? One, you're looking to capitalize on the downside. Two, you're pooping your bloomers, thinking something really bad is taking place. Right? Or three, you're scrambling, you know, for massive protection, but still the th same thesis. You're worried about, you're scared, fear. Okay? You can look. I should have made this longer. I could have, but it would have really painted the picture nicely. You can look throughout the last several years. We haven't seen this. Oh, I got red now. How'd that happen? We haven't seen this in a long time. Right here. We haven't seen that. That's a huge spike. Okay, so again, a lot of times you could see this is not even worth paying attention to because this only comes in moments of fear, right? This is not coming on normal little pullbacks. You could see, look, throughout the whole bull market, nobody has an interest in this. Why would they? Why would they? You can't blame them. There's nothing wrong with that. But in times of fear, you get massive spike like this. And to go along with everything else we were seeing, it tells you, again, there's a high probability of a squeeze. Oh. Okay. Uh, what else I got? This is just a normal um, trader sentiment thing. But again, they, they all paint the same picture as what I'm getting at, guys. Okay. All the stuff I look at, you know, even some of the stuff I look at secondarily you know what i mean this is not even primary stuff like i said that we're gonna have signals off and on you know same thing here boom and you know i get a lot of questions about this too okay even when these things you see this extreme move right first of all we're up here Sentiment all bullish again. The most of this like higher than new highs. Then we get the quick sell off, right? And you see this one move down here the first time into the green. That's this, right? That's that leg right there. Most of you probably aren't aware, or maybe don't remember, or maybe you do. There was a 
big time snapback off that. You guys remember that? That was a tradable move off that. Now, all the other stuff wasn't there, but this was. You know what I mean? So they squeezed those guys, got them feeling okay again, and then took it down again, setting it up again. You know, and now we're over here again. So similar to the snapback, they can they can do this if they want. They can catch them if they want. They don't have to, but they can now. Um, let me see. I posted some of the, just the other stuff there. Let's see. Uh, this was there too. Option buyer sentiment gauge, you know, hot, cold. Just everything was lining up. Uh, some of the intermediate stuff didn't get there. This NASDAQ sentiment index. This is where we are, you know, cooled off a decent amount, but not to where we would want it. Major bottom levels could still get there just by us chopping around. You can see even with the rally, there's not much of a bump here. This is a longer term indicator. That's why. But if we chop around and the market doesn't do much, you get a headline or two, this will be down there before you know it. All right, but the shorter term stuff all look like the put the call, basically, guys. All look like the put the call. I thought I'd put another one in here, but they're all the same. They're all the same. All right. And, you know, the flow, again, the flow looks fine. I mean, we're seeing some VIX buying, VXX buying further out, June, Jan calls. You know, it's tough to get a read for the short term off of something like that. You know, is it a little bit of concerning we're seeing that? Yeah. But again, they, they're doing it with time, you know. Come, I mean, January, who knows what happens to this market by that time? You know, we could go to new highs, another leg higher, and then crash to 5,000 in this market the way by January. So you don't want to get caught up in, in too much of that stuff. The flow's been decent. We had the missiles come in Friday. We had a couple other good-looking orders come in. It hasn't been that crazy rush of quality sweeper activity like we've seen in prior rallies last year. And we shouldn't expect it. You know, it's a, it's a different market right now. It's a different market. But again, you know, we had the Micron. We had Disney uh, catch some decent action. I mean, the best-looking bet in Disney was July. All the... Predominantly, all the good-looking action with time behind it. All the good-looking action has decent time behind it. All of it. You know, Disney, they did some buying here. July being the best bet. Uh, WDC into strength. Uh, faded with a lot of things on Friday, but a good-looking... What was that, July? I think that was July, too. I'm not sure if I got it. Uh, uh, we'll go over that. You know... Micron was July, but again, came at the sweet spot. So you got a nice move out of it. Intel, we spoke about. You know, so, I mean, right now, I think the smart play, uh, WDC July 100, John is saying. So that's July too. So listen, when you're seeing that type of action, like the, the quality coming with time, they have... I wouldn't use the word concern, but they're they're just being prudent, you know, over the extreme short term. You know, a lot of the good looking smart money bets, they come with decent time anyway. But when you're seeing a pattern of that type of buying, they're usually looking to avoid maybe, you know, some weakness, some chop, some shorter term volatility, uncertainty, stuff like that. So will we take the same approach? Now, if we're active traders, again, this is about knowing your style. You know, if you're an active trader, this is still a great time, in my opinion. It's still a great time. You know, when, <clears throat> excuse me, when we get some intraday weakness and you see some good looking flow come in, you know, the flow change, that's an opportunity for a short term trade. 
that's an opportunity for a quick trade. You, know, you just got to be a little more careful about chasing strength. You, I see it already. What players were doing at the Taylor end of this bull move, when things got a little out of control, they're already getting the appetite to do it again here. <clears throat> and that's that FOMO. You know how quickly things changed in a couple days. So you see a pullback. You see some weakness. You see some decent buying coming into that weakness. That's your opportunity for a quick trade there. You know, otherwise, I think we have to be patient to see flow wise. We have to see some real sector rotation, sector focus. Again, where names will outperform the overall market. Even as a day trader, some of my better days outside of like this week, I had one really, really good day. Haven't had a day like that in a long time. And that was because we had a pullback. We had a correction. So we had that slingshot. Okay. But normally without this type of, you know, scenario, my best days used to come on market days where the market was down and not really doing much. Most traders aren't even paying attention. They're bored. You know, they're calling it chop or whatever the case may be. But under the hood, there was outperformance. You know, under the hood, there was some biotech buying that, you know, we, we picked up on early in the morning that really took off. Or maybe the energy names were hot that day. They were red and a rush of buying came in, you know, and the overall market's not doing anything, but the energy sector, you know, is outperforming or the retail sector <clears throat> or casinos. You know what I mean? You remember it used to be banks for a week. Then they take the banks would go quiet. They'd go into tech for a week. Then techs would chop, you know, chop around. And they go into biotech for a week. So that sort of thing. So even if the market, you're not relying on the market, the market's not doing a hell of a lot, but we're getting some outperformance under the hood. So that's, that's what I'm kind of hoping for and looking for. Um, if these lows are intact here, because, and you've seen patterns like this before in this market, we could go into, I hate to try to draw lines here and pretend like I'm some technical guy, but where you get that diamond shape junk, you know what I mean? You guys know what I'm talking about. You know, I'm just giving a basic broad thing, but where the highs are here comes down, they find the bottom here and they chop around in this. You guys know what I'm talking about. Where the opportunity becomes the bottom of the range. And then you look to sell the rips. And where everybody thinks we're breaking out again, you know, they hit them over the head and knock them down to the bottom of the range. And we fought around in here for a little bit. Until we get some answers and who knows, you know, you know me, I'm as bullish as anybody out there, but maybe there is another leg lower. The likelihood was it wasn't coming out of here though, without a squeeze prior. The odds of that happening were slim. You know, it could come down the line here. If they catch them off guard, it could come. Or at the same time, we may, people may get all bared up here and we have some fuel for a rally higher where they can squeeze some shorts. That's another thing. There's no more shorts to be squeezed here. Now there's got to be buying here and a good amount of buying. So now we, we take it nice and easy, nice and easy. You know, you look for maybe specific names that have gotten hit over the head that you like, you know, you, WDC, let's say, for example, which caught that July bet. You don't necessarily have to chase up a buck 40 on Friday. You know, wait, maybe you get a red day. This thing's had a nice rally here. If you were buying it here, it's a different story. You want to look to put on something, you know, that's a nice spot. This is not, not that great of a spot off a rally like this. So maybe you get a little weakness there. 
who knows? They sweep it again. And that's, you could put on a, a stab there. You know, there were some real nice spots. Even Disney was a nice spot. You know, now Disney for, let's say, hypothetically, Disney didn't catch the action here and is catching it here now. You know, you had a little bit of a lift here. This thing could easily breathe. But in options, a little breather, you know, for a lot of you who don't really trade with time behind it, it could hurt. Even with time behind it, if it could be avoided, you like to avoid it. You know, so just take a nice and easy approach. There's still some earnings out there. If you're an active trader, there's still opportunities. You know, Dean had a couple of questions uh, about some day trading stuff. Uh, we could go over some of that, Dean, if you like. Um, when I take questions from you guys, you know, what to look for as far as those shorter term opportunities. But I think as far as positions, swing trading, stuff like that, based off, again, what I look at. And that's what we hear today, right? That's what we're talking about. Flow and sentiment. We have to wait and see where the flow and where emotions go from here. I think it's important. Um, let's look at some of the flow. Like I said, Friday, uh, similar to some of the other days, really selective action that was clean. You still got a good chunk of names with earnings. All right. Uh, the WDC bet is interesting. Decent amount of time. The size is there. Okay. You can wait and see. If they come in again, maybe you get a better price. You you always run the risk that it runs away from you. But unlike Friday, with like the Micron and all that stuff, the Intel, I think it's more beneficial to wait here. Or put on, you know, a starter position here. Put on a starter and, and play it like that, if you like the name. Um, what else do we have? CMG, these are leaps, Jan 2020. Big time bet long term on the name. You can see there. So somebody betting on the Taco Bell CEO, big time premium. Uh, wasn't a sweep, was a block, uh, but still big time size for CMG. But again, a lot of time behind it. A lot of time. Um, if this thing was swept. It'd be a little more interesting because maybe they were looking, in other words, they were being aggressive in a rush to put that order on. So that could tell you that uh, they're looking for some momentum over even the short term, but this thing already has momentum. Besides, it's been a hot name. Uh, RRR, this is Red Rock Casino. Uh, a few of us traded this in the room on Friday, the equity uh, March and April activity. The March calls were crazy. It looked like the guy sold a piece, bought it at 79 cents. And I think it looked like he dumped the piece at a buck 25 or a buck 30. Uh, but then he came around later in the day and bought April 40s. This is not a name that sees this type of activity. Uh, oops, what did I do here? Let me erase this stuff. Hold on. Red Rock Casino. So that's what it looks like on a daily, you know, decent pull, otherwise been strong as hell. And you can see the reaction. This name doesn't catch this type of action. There it is in the morning. Uh, basically, caught the action, and, you know, this is, a, this is a minute chart. So one, two, three, basically in five minutes, went from 32 and a half to 35 digested, had another push, sort of chopped around the rest of the day. Uh, but unusual sweeper activity there in the RRR Red Rock Casino. This name caught unusual activity um, and some sweepers there too. This Blue Apron, which has been a nightmare of an IPO. I'm sure shorted to death this thing. So they could be anticipating a squeeze there. Here's what the daily looks like. Look at this menagerie. Wow. 
Does he get any worse as far as bringing a company, a company public than this? There was some hype behind this, wasn't there? Wasn't there like hype behind this IPO? Was it a popular IPO? What the hell is that? That's pretty awful. Um, but anyway, this is, since it's public, this is probably the most, I would say, the aggressive activity that I've seen in this name. We saw, like, you would see an okay size block, Jan buyer, like a year out, stuff like that. Uh, this action was pretty aggressive. Again, since it's public, uh, this is the most aggressive action, sweeper action. So, you know, if you like playing these micro cap names, smaller price names, even the equity or the option, yeah, it might be your style. Uh, they could be anticipating a squeeze. I'm sure there's a ton of shorts in here. Every dog has its day. So they were paying. There was a bunch of different orders. Uh, these were the two top size orders. Uh, you had almost 3,000 March 4 calls. To 12 cents cheap and then april four calls um that's where some of the better looking sweeper activity was 30 cents on the april four calls all right dollar amount nothing huge these are cheap because you know look at the stock all right um but yeah so this is like this is basically it okay this is like, in my opinion, every day I post in the room at the bell and on private Twitter, um, some of the action that caught my eye, you know, clean, decent size there, you know, somewhat interesting. Um, and this, this was it Friday. All right. This was it Friday. So we're not, we're not seeing a whole, we're not seeing a ton of clean action. And listen, one it's got a lot to do with that. Still, there's a lot of action earnings related. We are seeing still a decent amount of that. All right. And, and two, we can't compare it to the bull rally and the flow we had off the election throughout the year last year. Yeah, that was flow that I've, I've never seen before. Like, there, literally, there were bull missiles every single day. Okay. So, you know, maybe we get, you got to understand, like, to me, in my opinion, last year was the outlier, kind of. That's not the norm. You know, maybe we're going into a more normal market. Maybe there's some volatility there. You know, maybe more chop there. Which means more opportunity if you're an active trader, which means a little more pulling your hair out and discipline if you're a position swing trader. That's what normal markets do. Normal markets, this is not normal. Okay, so I wouldn't go too crazy reading into the flow of not being as aggressive um, early on here off this correction. You know, selectively, there's, a, there's been some good-looking action. All right, here was some of the size action. Let's see. Is this it? Yeah. All right, again, some of it has earnings. I hope you guys can make that out. Oh, I got to get this thing is in my way. All right. Um, GM, that was part of uh, a spread tied to stock, so forget that. Uh, Walmart, they have earnings. Uh, Bank of America was a lot of rolling, moving around. Uh, VMW, that wasn't clean. You understand, like every single Comcast, they have earnings. Uh, JD, they have earnings. There was a lot of rolling there. There's that WDC sweeper that was clean. Uh, Micron had some decent flow early on, mostly in calls expiring Friday. Uh, some July stuff as well in Micron. Uh, BSX was a name that had a little action, cheap action. Some spec action there, Boston Scientific. Yeah, nothing too crazy, but some spec activity there. You know, again, off a, off a decent move off the lows there. Probably best to wait for some sort of breather. 
Uh, and that's it. Bristol Myers had a little more repeat activity, a lot of repeat activity too, right? These are names like Micron, you know, again, not to beat the dead horse here, but Micron, if the missiles are here and this is the sweet spot of an entry, what the hell you want to do with this up here? You know, you're either still in this and you got decent amount of time on your calls or you've been trimming, you got some runners or you're rolling. You're not looking to put on initial positions here. That's foolish. When down here was the sweet spot. You know, last year, though, right, throughout the rally, people got away with that. And that's where the bad habits come into play. All right, let me get to uh, your action, uh, your action, your questions, uh, trading questions, flow questions, sentiment questions, anything questions, anything goes. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Please don't be ashamed to ask a question, especially when you deal with myself. I got my own type of lingo that I expect everybody to just understand. You know, a lot of the crap that comes out of my mouth, there's a lot of people that don't know what I'm talking about. So don't feel ashamed um, to ask any question whatsoever. All right. If you do have any questions beyond today, um, even the basics, you could go to wallstreetjesus.com. You go to the strategy tab right here. Boom. And you got some short very short, quick blogs, easy reads, just explaining uh, what are sweeps, how you can take advantage or you look to take advantage of wise guy activity, ways I've seen traders trade professionally off wise guy activity, simple stuff like that. You know, you're a day trader, what to maybe look for. You're looking for big moves, you know, higher risk, high reward moves, what to look for, all this type of stuff. All right, so you go to wallstreetjesus.com strategy section. You're sitting around the long weekend. Monday, the casino's closed. Maybe you want to sift through some of the stuff if you're curious. All right, what do we got going on here? Let us let me do this in somewhat of a chronological chord. Uh, squeezometer. Young is asking the squeezometer was hot going into Friday, Young. Uh, this is where we finished. Okay, so Thursday, you know, was up there into the close, and then we finished here, which they washed out a little bit of it, but I, there was a fade, right? If, yeah, there was a fade off the uh, Mueller Russian indictments, so that helped. All right, um, but again, you know, at the lows, we're coming from all the way in the green, right? So we went from green and we got all the way back to the debts, but that's, you know, this is a shorter term sentiment indicator. And when you have a market with these type of moves, this quick guys, you're going to see the shorter term sentiment. It's not going to last very long. And the moves justify it. Uh, David's asking, how do you determine if call buyers or sellers are correct since 80% of options expire worthless? Good question. Um, I don't look at it that way at all, David. See, I'm not looking for, and you raise a good point. That's one of the reasons why I'm not looking for that bet that may be actionable to me as a trade. I'm not relying on that bet to be correct by expiration. Yeah, if that makes sense. Okay. What I'm focused on, and again, depends on your trading style, but if you're a shorter term trader, day trader, swing trader, okay, you're looking to take advantage off the bet that the momentum that bet may generate. It's as simple as that. Okay. And what that means is if there is aggressive Sweeper activity coming into a name, okay? And the action quantifies as being as aggressive. The, there's a high probability chance that you're going to see an uptick in momentum in that name, okay? There's a smart player that is aggressively in a rush to put on long exposure in the name. He could, anticipating, he could be anticipating a short squeeze. 
he could be anticipating some sort of chatter rumor news out there. We see a ton of times. We, a lot of times, he could be anticipating more buying coming in. Whether he's building a position in the name or just more buying coming in the name in general. I mean, we see sweepers, even on an intraday basis, front-running size orders more than ever. When you get hung up on relying on the bet being correct, you're dead. And that's where a lot of the unusual activity crowd out there, that's where they fall into that trap. Okay, they fall into that trap. Me, in simple, a simple explanation, okay, you see Micron catch missiles like we saw Friday. The likelihood that there's momentum generated of that type of action is pretty high, in my experience. Because what that tells me, that type of action is not even a pro trader getting in. That's usually a sharp player getting in, a.k.a. a Tepper, an activist, Elliot. That's their style. Okay, so I don't even want Tepper to be right, per se, but I want to take advantage of that momentum. And I always have the option of him being right as well. Right? That's like the gravy. Okay, and the likelihood Tepper, look, I call it Tepper. I'm not 100% sure it's him. You know, I, I kind of use it as slang. But the likelihood that more of that buying coming in is high as well. And what do you think that, what, what kind of effect is it going to have on the name? If more buy, we already saw the effect it had already. You know, what effect would it have if they continue to do that? So that's why I said, you know, you, you look at the action. It's at a spot where you like the entry. You get in as a swing trader, you know, period, as any trader. After that entry, that trade goes according to your rules now. If you start relying on that bet, being right by expiration, you're a dead man. Because, you know, David, you just hit the nail on the head. 98% of, of the options expire worthless by expiration. So the numbers are against you. Uh, what else we got? Vickers is saying, how do you see tech names from here? Amazon, Google, NVIDIA have run a lot. Do they take a break? Whether they run more from here is, Vickers is something I'm not really too interested in. You know what I mean? Like for me, again, like let's say a Tesla, okay? You had that September missile, another big bet on the Friday, come into the lows there, Okay. Whether this name goes straight higher from here is irrelevant to me because I am not looking for an entry here anymore. You understand? You can't just buy Tesla at any given moment as the stock trades higher and think you're going to make money consistently in this game. Can a lot of traders do that, right? They buy Tesla down here. They sell it here. They see it running here. They buy it up there. What? Is I mean, think about that for a second. Why don't you just hold your initial position, roll it out, take some more time if you didn't have enough time was one of the reasons. You're going to have this entry here and then sell it here and then rebuy it up here because it, it's moving higher? So that, that's the problem that names set up only so often. So if you trade the same names, Okay, if you have a group of names that you stick to as a swing trader, that's fine. But you better have the discipline and the patience to allow them to set up. Because the setup is not there every day, every week. You know, I, I see a lot of, you know, retail traders out there say that. Oh, you know, I got 20 names that I trade and that's it. But meanwhile, they're trying to trade them every week. You know what I mean? Or trying to trade them every... It can't be physically. It can't be a quality opportunity in the same small group of names every week. 
how, how could that be even realistic? You, know, you, you have to let them set up. If you're a day trader, okay, obviously it's a little different, you know, but the same thing. If you trade FANG, there can't be a quality opportunity in FANG on the long side every single day, right? So you got to look to take advantage on days where that opportunity exists. You can't just look to trade them every day because you like to trade them. So that's why, like, for me, because the answer to your question is you hit the nail on the head. They've moved a decent amount, right? I mean, again, I'm taking Tesla. Google uh, caught some action. There was a Goog buyer, G-O-O-G they played. They didn't play the one with the L. Some guys in the room made money with it. But, I mean, now you can't look to buy, rebuy this year. Let it set up. Maybe the markets, you know, maybe – uh, we come in Tuesday morning and Mueller has more indictments that are American ties. And this market takes a poop. And these things set up again. That's the opportunity you're looking for. So I really, I'm not paying attention, you know, on what these things may do from this point. I really, you know, I have no edge there. I have no edge there anymore is what I'm saying. Uh, what else we got here? See, I do this all the time. Chronological order I'm trying to get into here. How come Lucci does this so well? I can't. Um, I can't. Okay. Uh, Tom is saying we have seen large coal buying in VXX this week, mostly July and Jan strikes. Yep. We saw the same action just before the Feb sell-off. I mean, Tom, yeah, I spoke a little bit about this early on. I wouldn't. Look at that as a signal to short, if that's what you're getting at. You know, does it concern me? Yeah, a bit. But, you know, there's some decent time behind those bets. You know what I mean? There's some decent time behind those bets. So, you know, the reason why I'm not getting too wrapped up in them, Tom, is simply this. I already, again, my the game plan or flow and sentiment right now is to chill because of where we're at. So if this market wants to come lower over the short term and make those VXX bets look right over the short term, I'm for it. I'm not going to look to try to capitalize off it, but I'm for it. So they set up another long entry for me. You know, that's the way I look at it, but I, there's no, it's really hard to get a gauge on the short side there. I mean, how over the short term, are you going to say to yourself, all right, he's making a bet that this market's going to push lower or there's going to be downward pressure on this market or size VXX Jan buying? It's hard to really, you know, put that, put those pieces together, in my opinion. So it just adds to, um, like I said, the game plan that's already in place for me off flow and sentiment. Here's a spot to chill out right now and see where we go. If that makes sense, Tom. Uh, Dean, let's see. Dean, I can't, I don't understand your question there. They're kind of short and abbreviated. You probably were shooting them out while I was um, running my mouth there. I don't know what you're referring to. Uh, Maria saying ANDV saw a lot of post earnings flow. I kind of like that name. ANDV. Is that an energy name? What is that name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Energy name. There's some energy activity out there. And, you know, there's energy's tricky. We we talk about this all the time. You know, it's sort of, well, I guess like the gold miners in the sense. It's almost like you got to you have you got to have an idea of where crude is at a lot of the times um, because they usually move with crude for the most part. Sometimes I guess like the gold miners, they can, you know, outperform gold or outperform oil but for the most part what oil does these these energy names are going to do so it gets a little bit tricky there you ask anybody especially off flow what their least favorite sector is over the last year and it's not even close oil and gas i spoke to um one trader yesterday that was telling me some sick numbers he was showing me if he took out 
the energy plays he made off sweeper activity over the past, I think it was like seven months, his PNL would have been, I mean, you're talking about a huge difference. Like the bulk of his losers came from energy. And, you know, listen, you look at energy and what it did last year, and those are the reasons why a lot of money, smart money, dumb money, you name it money, really got torched in energy. It's been tough. It's been tough. You know, so, Maria, the point I'm trying to make is, yeah, right now for me, until we see just cleaner price action, even in some of these energy names, you got to just, you know, you got to be careful. That's all, you know, there's cleaner action in cleaner sectors that um, fare a lot better. I just, I know, including myself, even on the day trade side, I know a lot of people that have, you know, their losers are concentrated in energy. It's kind of aggravating. Uh, Dean is asking, a stock has moved to highs and it's one pretty good still sweeping do you give it no i'm not even going to go into the rest of the question so dean is asking a stock that catches activity i'll give you an example micron hey let's use this example and micron pissed me off because i traded it um as you probably know dean i mentioned it early monday uh friday morning and sold it pretty quickly and then exploded, okay? But let, let's use Micron as an example here. Let me move this over. And this will answer your question, Dean, I think. So this is what Dean is saying. Micron started to see some sweeper activity in Feb expiration, which expired Friday. Cheap, out-of-the-money stuff, but aggressive activity. Okay, one after the other after the other. There was also a decent-looking July sweep in the mix. And you guys know the missile was July Friday, okay? So that was confirmation that there was some real action mixed in. Um, and you had this here. You had two drawdowns there that they were sweeping the activity into, which set up a decent day trade, in my opinion, Okay. Dean is saying that that sweeper activity continued as this thing pushed higher. So basically, they were sweeping down here early on, right out of the gate, and they continued to sweep up here. And Dean is asking, if they continue to sweep up here, do, you, do I still look at that action in the same light, or maybe not even the same light, look to take advantage of that action? And for me, the answer is no, Dean. I'm looking to get in when that activity just starts to heat up. Okay. So as soon as I see that sweeper activity starting to pick up in this case, Micron or in any name, that's where I'm looking to fire. Okay. After that, I'm just looking for the momentum of that activity to drive me higher if I'm still in the name, but I'm not looking to rebuy it. Up at higher levels. Now, I know some traders that if you get a decent fade and they start hitting into that fade aggressively, I know quite a few traders that would look at that as an opportunity for a quick intraday trade. But myself, I don't I don't do that much at all. I rarely do it. Okay, but that you're talking about off a of fade, which Micron really didn't have much of a fade throughout. Yeah, you had little things like this until again the whole market kind of uh and that and the action cooled down there. But to answer your question, just like with swing trading the initial activity, and that when I was primarily swing trading, that's how I did it then. I do it the same thing with day trading. The first signs of that activity starting to heat up and get aggressive. That's where I want to be in, you know, try to figure out where things are going wrong, where my stop is going to be, have an idea of that. And again, based on what the market may be doing, uh, the overall action looks, whether I want to be quick on the sell or try to give it some room and stay looser. Okay. 
but I'd be the first to admit I am awful at giving room staying looser part. So I got no advice to give you there. I am awful. As far as letting winners run intraday, I, I don't do that as much as I probably should. I like to take the quick move. You know what I mean, Dean? It's like I f- that's where I have the most I have the most confidence in that. You know, I know if Micron sweepers are coming in aggressively, I know that these market makers got to hedge that risk off. I know that's going to snowball into some momentum. It's just a matter of how much momentum. But I'm confident it could be profitable. You know, some winners are big. Some winners, you know, run out of steam early on, and I have to pull the plug and take a small loss or a small gain. A a lot of the times I'm selling and they have another leg higher, to tell you the truth. But I complain about it, but I'm okay with it, you know, because that's my strategy. That's my strategy. Again, sweepers, you got to think of them as momentum. No matter what your trading style is, especially as an active trader, you got to think of sweeper activity as momentum. The same thing like intraday, okay? We see the whole tote board in the room. What I mean by tote board is this thing on the side here. Will all be red, okay? Ding, 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 opening bell. There's put sweeper activity, straight run, all bearish bets to, let's say, 11 o'clock. And then all of a sudden, right, missiles come firing in on the call side or aggressive activity on the call side comes in. That board starts to light up green. Those first signs of buying coming in, legitimate buying coming in, I want, that's where I want to be involved. That's where I want to be involved. Okay? And usually what happens is, You know, like we saw on Friday, you see a market selling, selling, selling. There's no call activity in sight. All of a sudden, the market finds a little bit of bottom, okay? And then, boom, Micron bull missiles. Boom, they're sweeping this there. Boom, spy sweepers. Something changed. That's what I want to be involved in. And let the momentum carry me higher. And then, you know, there's several things you could do. You raise your stops if you're dealing with equity trim and trail, blah, blah, blah. I still haven't really figured that part out well. I, you know, I can't do it well is what I'm saying. There's several things you can do. Um, The best thing I used to do was the ATR and I just don't do it as much anymore. You know, run an ATR stop nice and easy on the chart, you know, and that's pretty much your guide. That's pretty much your guide, you know, letting winners run. The problem is a lot of times, Dean, you're going to give profits back. So you had a decent profit. Now it turned into an eh profit. So that turns you off to doing that the next time. But at you're going to catch some bigger winners that just selling into the momentum wouldn't allow you to do. So it's a preference thing. You know what I mean? It's a preference thing. Uh, William, good morning, Mr. Strzok. How are you? Uh, some crazy moves in ALXN this week. Did you like the sweeper activity? That yeah, I mean, just like some uh, most of the action we were seeing, uh, ALXN caught some decent action there. Some decent action. I didn't really look at it too hard, um, as far as dive into it a bit. Um, but I know, like you had it right. Several of you guys had that. I remember you talking about it, uh, Bill, that you had this ALXN. So yeah, caught some nice action. Caught some nice action. Yeah, you know, there was there was again as far as for a trade, there were several names out there uh, throughout the week that caught some real decent action. You know, tradable action. ABBV, as you guys know, um, was one in particular as well. You know, and the ABBV was kind of decent. Um, not that the action was impressive. As far as quality, uh, they were looking for that quick move in Febs, right? What was it? The 116s, I think they were buying on uh, Wednesday on here. So, like, you know what I mean? Here, again, setup-wise, this is where the action 
started up in that ABBV and it was spec action. Okay. But for like a, a day trade, swing trade, short term trade, like that's a decent spot here. You know what I mean? You're not chasing. You know, you got a nice breather here off a pull. So, like, this is where you want to look for an entry on a name like this that's been so hot. And then we see that activity come in, more activity come in, and then there was a halt, there was news, there was a whole nine yards in this thing. Right? They halted the stock on Thursday, though, and then had big news Friday. So they did it backwards, um, but still, all in all, you know, nice winner. So there was there was a lot of things like this, this, the ALXN, uh, and stuff like that. The reason, I mean, guys, the reason I'm not bringing these names up anymore, um, if you're in them, you're in them. If you're not, I don't recommend chasing them. You know, like even Disney. You guys heard me ranting and raving about that Disney July sweep, right? It was pretty good looking. And not only that, it was like spec sweepers all around that, meaning weeklies, front month, cheaper stuff, which sort of gave you a heads up. Listen, this thing might have some movement shorter term here. You know, it may not be today or tomorrow, but, um, and it happened to catch a move shorter term. So, but now up here, you know, you had the move already. So kind of want to look forward from here and see, um, you know, some of the newer names that come about. Uh, WDC is one you can eye. Uh, what was another name that was? Oh, Cena. That was up huge and caught a, I don't remember, August sweep, something like that, with some time behind it, uh, then was down. But again, you know, look, you know what I mean? And this is what concerns me. So you buy Cena here and you're caught in this. So that's why I'd rather let, if it goes, it goes without me. Let it breathe a little. Or if you have to put on a small piece, and then maybe you get the luxury of buying at the ideal uh, entry there, if that makes sense. Uh, let's see. There it is. Uh, Dean saying, do you think the steel names have more upside? The action was insane, uh, but... If you're in them, I would probably definitely hang on to some of it. You know, I wouldn't chase up here. You know what name I like there, Dean? Um, it's a bit extended too, but MT. That, in my opinion, seeing some of the better activity of recent. I don't know if you remember, there was some real nice action in this MT. Um about a week ago, you know, I love this group too. I love this group because, you know, they've been so out of favor. Uh, you know, we've been talking about this group for so long and we finally had a pull in it and then they pulled this crap on Friday. I mean, look at this. They're all at new highs. So you had the, the tariff news there, right? You had, it was news related. So I, I wouldn't chase. Um, if any name, I would be looking for an entry maybe on this MT if you could get a dip. But you don't want to, you know, you don't want to chase this now. You know, you run the, a lot of What happens is, I don't even know the news in detail. This may sound unprofessional. But what happens, you got a reversal of that news. You know? You got to be careful chasing that. You want to be in before this. I know it's easier said than done, but there are opportunities where you'll be in before this. You just, you, you want to try to wait around for those. Um, Estofia is asking about Walmart. Yeah, there's been some decent flow in Walmart. You have earnings though. You have earnings, but there's been some decent action in Walmart. The only earnings bet that I like to see, um, but even then I don't play it, is a clean put seller, even more so a risk reversal pre-earnings. Uh, that's the only thing I have any confidence in, into earnings. Uh, one, because the put sellers could pretty much tells you if there is any weakness, they'll likely support it. You know what I mean? 
Uh, but the call buying, you know, it doesn't excite me pre-earnings. It just doesn't excite me. But Walmart has had uh, some decent flow. Uh, let me scroll down here just in case I missed any questions. I probably did. Hang on. Uh, John saying, I like your style in and out. Uh, sure, sometimes there is that leg higher, but how many times has your quick trigger saved you? Yeah, well, that's what that's why I keep doing it, John. That's why I keep doing it. You know what it is? I'm content. I'm comfortable with what I do, John. And I think a lot of traders, that's where they run into trouble, where the profits are not enough, and then they start reaching and grabbing for more and doing stupid things. You know, again, if, if you trade a certain style, like I'm convinced, listen, no matter what you do, okay, if you trade off wise guy activity, using it as a momentum indicator, okay, and you have some sort of risk management structure around that, you will be profitable net net at the end of the game. The problem is that's not enough for a lot of traders. You understand? But you have to think realistically here, okay? Anybody who's just writing trends out there, right? You got a lot of trend traders. They're pretty arrogant about it too, if you ask me. But a lot of guys who just ride the trend out there, ride the trend. If they're beating the S&P, they're lucky. All right? So think about that. Think about that. So you can understand there's nobody out there who's trading actively and seeing 800% return annually. <laughs> there's nobody out there who's, you know, swing trading, seeing 150% on their money every year. It doesn't exist, guys. It doesn't exist. So if you're an active trader and you're looking to sort of generate an income from it, you, know, you it's almost like a, a, you got to look at it through gambling, a gambling aspect. More winners than losers. Okay. If your winners can be greater than your losers, you're even in better shape there. And then as you have confidence in that approach, you can always size up. You'll find a way to size up, get your hands on more money to size up. All right. But initially you're not going to break the bank. You're not going to get rich. You're not going to retire, buy, buy a Ferrari, put it on Instagram over the next six months. There's no way to do that in this game without taking big, big huge risk. Okay. And if you're looking to do that and you're okay with taking risk, fine. But what happens is, let me tell you a little story quickly. That thousand percent gain that you're maybe up by today's date, you will have a string of big losers that are going to eat away at that thousand percent gain. And you know where you're going to end up at the end of the game? probably up 40, 50%, 60% anyway. See, people don't, they, they don't understand that. You may be up 300% today, but if you're up, you know, that aggressively and you're taking that much risk, there's a good chance that you're going to get caught and you're going to give back a good chunk of it. And you may be okay with that. You know what I mean? You may be okay with that. But your net net number is not going to be up in these fallacy unicorn things that you hear on social media. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. So that's the problem. You know, that's the problem. People, you know, traders aren't, it's not enough for them. You hear me say that all the time. It's not enough. Uh, when I, any restaurants in play, what? You know, it's funny. What restaurant? I saw a restaurant that I never even heard of. That Oh, there was one wing that had earnings flow. You ever hear of that? Wing. Has some flow pre-earnings. Um, throw me, Greg, throw some restaurants 
into the uh, question thing there, and I'll let you know if I saw anything that you might be interested in. Wendy's, yes. Wendy's had uh, spec algo type sweepers. I don't know what the news was on Friday, uh, but had a gap up. Uh, but there was some sweeper activity in Wendy's here. And I'm sure you might know, Greg, there was big time action uh, back here into this weakness, if you remember. Oh, it was an upgrade. That's right. Somebody told me about that. Yep. Uh, yeah, so, you know, there was some spec activity here. But Wendy's, there's been big flow with time behind it uh, from back here that they keep pushing out, rolling. Uh, some of them were even, they're still open. I think they were so far out. So, yeah, Wendy's has had some decent flow. Wendy's has had decent flow. Shake Shack, I haven't seen um, anything recent. Uh, Maria's saying big buyback, too, in Wendy's. Yeah, because I, I don't remember they had earnings. That's what I was saying. Uh, Jack had some news. What was it? Jana got involved? Wasn't it Jana? I think it was Jana got involved in Jack. So you had some news there in a pop. Uh, Texas Roadhouse? No, I didn't see anything in Texas Roadhouse. I'm trying to think, there was some of these obscure restaurant names we see. Like I said, the Wing. Um, I can't remember. If I see it, I'll post it on Twitter. I didn't know anybody was interested in that uh, group. IGT. That was a nice trade for us uh, this week. Um, IGT was looking great. If you guys remember, uh, caught the action. Where was it? Here somewhere. And had a nice little grind tire. I'm not going to say nice. Slow grind tire. And then we got caught in this pull. Um, and it set up a nice trade here. Into this pull, there was some unusual Feb sweeper activity that expired later in the week, Friday. I honestly thought there was a, a filing coming out. You know what I mean? Uh, Elliot, Jana, somebody like that, who was maybe going to announce they built a position um, or, or of that sort. I didn't hear anything. Um, but then this thing had a nice move, uh, ended up being a nice trade. I, I didn't hear any news. So maybe they were just playing a rebound there. I don't know. It was strange. It was strange. Uh, strange meaning, you know, they were basically buying weeklies in IGT, you know, without earnings involved or anything like that. Uh, a lot of times that's, you know, rumor, news type thing they're looking for. Um, but anyway, you know, we got a nice little poke out of it, uh, even without that, uh, which was good. Uh, yeah, so basically from this point, Jim, I would like to see some further activity coming in. I like this name. You know, I like this group. I like this uh, name. Um, you know, if you're in it and you have time, I would be okay with that. I don't want to chase up here, though. You know what I mean? And more of a market in, than, than anything else. If they come in and they start um, focusing on this gambling sector, like if there's rotation into the group, you know, that would be the opportunity there. Right? We still got to see if that, you know, that rotation comes into play here. Um, I'm a big fan of the name, though. That and this name, you guys know, SGMS. Uh, those are my two favorite in the group. This also caught some action into the pull, uh, which is underwater. I mean, it's a decent pull, but look look how much this has been up. You know, it's tough. It's tough. I like the name, though. I like the name. Uh, what other names we got going on here? What do I think of the APRN sweepers? Jim, if it's your cup of tea, I think it's worth a spec play, if that's what you're looking. You know what I mean? You're looking to try to catch a squeeze there, if you were looking at the name. Um, the action itself is worth a look. Uh, Dean saying Kroger buyout chatter. Really? Yeah, I mean, listen, it's worth a look. What, And you got to understand, it depends how you want to play it. You're looking for that quick pop. You could probably see it. You could probably see it. There's shorts there. You know, the activity was aggressive. 
Um, maybe you get some weakness early next week. Yeah, you know, you're not going to get much. I mean, this was up 8%, and that's a quarter on this thing. You know, you're dealing with a $3 stock. Uh, but the April 4s, I would roll the dice with, if any. The April $4 calls. You know, you put in what you're willing to lose. Maybe you get lucky, that type of thing. Yeah, it is unusual. Definitely unusual. Um, and honestly, it was aggressive. I'm not going to say it wasn't. There was some, there was, that April sweeper was pretty decent. And there were a couple of March. So, and yeah, it's a roll of the dice spec play there. You know what I mean? That type of thing. I don't, it wasn't the action that, not yet anyway, where uh, some signs of maybe a Sharpie getting involved, that type of thing. It wasn't like the Micron missiles. It was spec action. Uh, when do you roll versus close a position? That's a great question, Sam. The This is tough. It's a preference thing, in my opinion. Okay? It's not easy to do what these guys do. I'm fascinated by what they do when they roll positions. It really... Because you can understand, we spoke about this a couple times in the past. You got to be willing to bite the bullet, okay, and have your last roll go south. Your last roll up, take a hit if you want to roll the way they do, okay? So for, you, for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, it's like this. Anyway, Micron will see sharp sweeper activity come in, right? Let's say at the start of this rally here. The stock goes higher. Rather than them close out what they bought for a profit, okay, and lock in the profit, what they do is they close out their initial position. They go out two months further, up a couple strikes, and roll up and out, and put some money in their pocket, meaning they don't take the whole amount and roll up and out. They take a piece of it and roll up and out. Then the stock goes higher. They do the same thing. Roll up and out, take a chunk, pay yourself, put it in your pocket. Okay? And then the stock goes higher. So what it allows them to do is catch this. Okay? But they will continue to do this until that last roll up and out doesn't work out. You understand? So think about that for a second. They're willing to give that up. Okay, they're locking in profit along the way, but they're willing to have that last batch go under. So for you to mimic that strategy is really tough, really tough. And honestly, you got to have the bankroll to do it. You know what I mean? You got to have the bankroll to do it. So what I, what I recommend to a lot of people is if names like this, okay, let's say Amazon. I'll give you a perfect example. Amazon, you remember Bazooka Joe and Amazon we were talking about back here? Where was it? Back here somewhere? Go back. Yeah, back here somewhere, okay? Let's say you tailed and made a play on that Amazon guy, okay? And you made some money. And now Amazon's a name you want to own. You like to own Amazon anyway, okay? And what happens is players really like to trade these names that they buy this thing continuously at higher levels anyway. So it, it's prudent to roll up and out and leave a piece of Amazon and lock in a nice profit for yourself. It makes sense to do that. Okay, because Amazon's a name you like to trade, like to own. And instead of looking to chase this thing at higher levels because you want to own it, you'll always have that piece that you rolled up and out on. And, you know, you can do it the same way I was showing you. They do it if you like. Okay, so I wouldn't utilize that strategy with everything. But I would utilize that strategy on names you like. You know, we see that we see that a lot. Like Microsoft, 
um, one of the members just did that with Microsoft. He played some action into the lows, made some decent money, and now you know he took a piece, he rolled up and out, and it was a small piece of his full position, a piece that he's willing to let go to zero. But if Microsoft, you know, who not catches some news, bing, 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 all of a sudden north of one hundred and ten dollars in two months. He's able to take advantage. Yeah, and and Jim saying, ask yourself if that wasn't you know a strong name that you want to be long of longer term. You know, so it it makes sense. It makes sense, and I think it's a great strategy for traders who get get, get caught in between a lot. That's where I think the biggest hurdle comes into playing options, especially for some of the newer traders. Okay. Because here's what happens you buy Microsoft. Okay. Or let's say, let's take Disney. Okay. Because Microsoft was even a bigger move. Sometimes it's not even that big of a move. Let's say Disney. If you were in for a trade on Disney, you bought here when the action came in, you have to be a seller here. If you're in March calls, in my opinion, you have to sell this move and lock it in. That was your trade. If you want more from here, take a piece of those March calls and roll them out to July. If you are trying to have your cake and eat it too, or however the saying goes, is that the way it goes? And want to catch this whole move in March calls, you're going to catch a beating in the option game. A beating. So many traders, I see it, you know, I've seen it you know, over and over, month in, month out in the room. They wait. They wait for weakness. They do everything right. You know what I mean? They're looking for names that are getting hit down a buck. Sweeper comes in. Boom, they're ready to fire, no hesitation. They like it even more that it's down, okay? And then they get that snapback trade rally that they were looking for. But now, you know what I mean? They think they could get more. Market's up, stock is up, it looks strong. And they turn that quick trade now into an investment. The only problem is the investment doesn't have enough time to be an investment. And the stock has one pullback. That's it. They drain the living daylights out of your premium. And you got time against you on top of it when you're in front month. Forget about weeklies. That's a whole, I mean, you could times what I just explained times 100 in weeklies. All right, but that's what you got to try to avoid as a trader, in my opinion, is getting caught uh, in the in-between. The quick trade is usually there, there when you do things right. You know, when you're looking to buy consolidation or a pullback, you know, and you're trading off the sweeper activity. Usually you have some green there. It's a matter of if it's enough, like everything else in this game. Uh, what else? Boeing. Yeah. Boeing was another name that you could have done it with. Uh, by the way, we saw some crazy action in Boeing too this week. What are they buying? Four fifties and stuff like that. Insane. Insane. Uh, SWKS, that used to be one of my favorite names to trade. Doesn't catch as much activity anymore. Um, if you guys remember, caught the Feb sweepers, but that was back here of this poll. Um, you know, volatile name, but had a decent move. Uh, we haven't really seen anything exceptional there, but you still have earnings in the way. So I'd rather it come post earnings anyway. You know, I'd rather it come post earnings anyway, unless they come with some decent time behind it, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, Lulu, I did see some, oh, you know what I saw in Lulu? Put selling. Uh, but that was for Feb. They were selling Feb puts earlier in the week. Uh, Chris, Feb puts earlier in the week. So in other words, what they were saying, the lows for the week were pretty much in. On Lulu, um, but those expired. I haven't seen really too much of anything else. 
Uh, yeah, Apple had a big move this week. How, and the negativity there, that that was the poster child of this pullback. No? Nobody wanted anything to do with this name. That's why she squeezed the hardest. I mean, look at this squeeze. Goodness. And a name like this. I mean, she did get hit over the head, though. She did get hit over the head. Uh, what else we got? Let me see. I'm scrolling back here. Uh, wait, I saw some cool names there. ABBV we spoke about. I lost the other one. Where'd it go? If I missed uh, a question on a name, please shoot it out again because I'm bad at navigating this stuff. Uh, do I chase chatter? Great question, Mike. Here's my approach, day trading chatter, Okay. I'm willing to get in if there's chatter. Like a lot of times we'll see algo sweepers that fire off rumors. Okay. Basically, it's an automated sweep that comes in. It's sifted out some chatter or rumor on the name before we even have our eyeballs on it. Okay. If and we pay attention. We got squawk running. We got a member, Mike, who's on top of it. Uh, the chatter, the rumor stuff, the upgrades nonstop throughout the day. But if we don't see anything, any chatter in the name, a lot of us will just fire immediately and hope to catch the chatter and sell into. Um, but a lot of times what we'll do is we'll play if there's chatter out there and the spike wasn't that big. I'll give you an example win on friday okay a lot of us played this win now here was the scenario there let me go back there i'll show you all right win had an algo sweep then another sweep and basically you can see right here what went on okay you can see the momentum that came into the name all right. And there were several of us who got in and sold into this rip. Okay. So that's what we're looking to do. What I won't do is fire up here. That's what I won't do. So it's kind of a judgment thing for me. Um, I like to see also if they're sweeping post chatter, if they're still sweeping the name and the chatters out, that means they still think it has legs to go higher. Uh, we've seen that recently, and I think it was TMUS, T-Mobile. All right? But, again, it's mostly a judgment thing. I don't like to chase, period. You know, I like to sell into the heat when everybody's talking about it. Another thing that happens a decent amount of time in, in the room is um, we're in names that Dr. J pumps on CNBC, right? He's talking about action. We're following action. We sell into that Dr. J pump every single time. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Every time. We never buy into a Dr. J pump. Ever, ever, never, ever, ever. Uh, so, you know, to answer your question, um, it's a judgment thing. And you hit the nail on the head. The, the word chase is important. If there's a big, huge spike there already and the chatter is out, you know, I'm not going anywhere near that. Uh, what I would, what would I suggest you do is wait for it to digest that. And then if sweepers are still coming into that digestion, you might have a play on another leg up. Okay. Uh, but again, if there's, if there's very little movement, or the chatter's not out. That's the stuff I like. You know, that's the stuff I like. Um, Merck and THO. No action in THO. Merck has seen a little bit of flow. There's been some flow in Merck. Like a lot of stuff this week. Um, a lot of smaller flow. B Bristol Myers, BMY, has seen its share of activity throughout the rally. Um, where is it? Daily. You know, this thing exploded, exploded. But in this group, you know, you had the ABBV, 
ALXN, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, Seljean had some action. Seljean's been a real dog, huh? Gilead, I think, had some action. So we'll see. Uh, INCY, Arnie had some action. They have earnings, though, right? I think they have earnings. I remember that action. Um, you know, another name that caught a real, really nice looking sweep, and that was before the poll. So it got hit and sort of like trying to form a bottom. This EDIT, but they have earnings. You know, they have earnings. So you, you want to try to avoid earnings. It's okay, maybe if you have some time. Um, but even myself, I got caught. Well, I got caught mostly in the pool too. But I, I have a position. You know, I didn't take huge size because of earnings and all. But I got caught in this thing. You know, and even though it's before the uh, panic attack in the market, so you're going to get caught no matter what. I'm pissed at myself because of the, the spot like this is not my spot up here what am i doing buying up here but what i did i think i told you guys i had equity so i traded the equity and i left um i took a shot on the july are they july calls june calls whatever they are and um i'm stuck in those things well I, my stop loss is zero so that's why but i, I held through earnings and I had earnings and the panic attack, and this is what happened, you know? So even though I have time, you know, I said, oh, okay, hold through earnings, and look what happened. I just, if you can avoid, there's so, there's so many opportunities out there, guys. Like, if you can avoid certain things, you try to avoid them, you know? Unless you're strictly an earnings player, you know? Unless that's your strategy, you really shouldn't fool around with it. There's no reason to fool around with it. You know, unless your strategy is you're putting in what you're willing to lose and you're looking for big upside or zero. And that could be your strategy. There's nothing wrong with that. But if that's not your strategy, don't don't fool with earnings. It's not worth it. Uh, yes, P had really aggressive activity earnings. You got earnings there, Josh. Okay. Oh, you said it at the end. I'm sorry. I didn't know you pushed it there. Uh, yeah, but nice activity in Pandora. Um, you know, had momentum this week. But you have earnings in the way. Could be earnings related. And who's to say? We never know what the true intent is of most of this flow, right? Unless they're missiles, like in Micron. Yeah, it's really, we have no idea what these guys are trying to do when they're buying these calls. And who's to say this is not a guy short at 10 bucks and doesn't want to cover into earnings, right? So he's hedging. Who's to say? How do we know that? You know, the strategy there would be to aggressively buy calls. Now, it may have some shorter term momentum into earnings off of that, right? But doesn't really tell us much. It's hit or miss about the reaction to earnings. We have no idea. Uh, Brent is saying that edit with a couple other names was on the IBD weekly. Yeah, I look at the. It was a decent. Um, this is a strong name. You know, this is a strong name. Like that GBT. Good old GBT. Look at that animal. Jim, remember we were talking about maybe this thing pulling back and there'll be an opportunity there? This thing doesn't even pull back. You know, you were right. This was probably the extent of it so far. So strong. You know, that, again, that was exceptional, exceptional sweeper activity there. Like, I can't even stress to you the type of action that was in, well, you guys know, I wouldn't shut up about it over and over again, but you know, it's just like, I tell you, you never know the true intent. We, 
it was pretty obvious the true intent of whoever was, was buying the living daylights out of this thing. You know, it was obvious. But they don't come around as often as you would like. They don't come around. Uh, what other names did I miss? H-A-B-T. You know, once upon a time, I remember that name because I had no idea what the hell it was. I uh, saw some flow pre-earnings, but that's about it. What are the cockamamie names? Avon saw a little bit of flow this week. There's some uh, news around the name. Uh, and this is not the first time Avon saw a flow. Avon saw a flow before the pull as well. So you had some more flow in that name. Um, yeah, MGM, you got earnings. Otherwise, there was some buying there again. You know, LVS had a nice rebound. That saw some flow off the pull. That was one of the names they hit up on Friday on that little buying spree they were uh, involved in. Uh, yeah, CZR, still seeing action, CZR. There was news there, too. Uh, choppy name, slow name, but sees its share of action. Yeah, Zanga, I st don't pay attention to Zanga order much, uh, Maria. Time to time, she'll see size action, especially around earnings. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I totally ignore that name. Totally ignore it. Zanga. I know, I saw the action. I can't believe they're still around. I forgot they exist. So, like I said, yo, there was a lot of names got hit Friday into early week. You know, not all exceptional, but a lot of there was a lot of bullish activity. You know, and they tapered off into uh, towards the end of the week. Um, and again, it sets up an interesting week this week. I say that every week. I guess that's the beauty of this game, though, right? The beauty of this game is that every week you come in and, you know, there's, there's always something to look out for. Always. Always. You know, like, I mean, last week was great because you had, like, the Friday missile buying into the turn, right? We had the huge squeeze. A lot of us made some decent money off that squeeze Friday, which pretty much was the blueprint for a monster squeeze follow through. So I was, I don't know about you guys, but I was looking at my chops coming into last week. Um, and then now it's more of a wait and see type approach, you know, but it's an interesting spot here. It's a really interesting spot. You know, what, what do they do with it from here? Do they melt it up and let everybody chase? You know, do they catch everybody who just had FOMO got long? That would be ideal if you ask me. Or even, you know, again, catch them and chop it around a little bit. You know, maybe some scare, like weakness off a headline, some scare again out there. And then we see buying coming into that. So that's what I'm saying. The true colors of what's going to take place in my opinion, is going to be the buying into weakness. Do we see that put sweeper activity show up again? Right? Where players are looking to take advantage of the downward momentum? Or do we see what we saw early this week where they buy that red? You know, and we see that another leg higher. So that's why this is real interesting. Real interesting. But unfortunately, I wish, you know, we had... A, some more evidence, you know, or sector rotation or anything. There's, there's nothing really like XLU. If you guys remember, I told you it might be worth a look. They were buying into uh, the lows there for a squeeze, but like the rest of the market, it's squeezed, you know, like everything else it's squeezed. Yeah. And, and that's, that's like the, the change Jim there, you know, you went, Earnings, uh, um, earnings, futures were up and then they sold into it, you know, and then, you know, we kind of saw the opposite this week where 
any weakness was just bought right up. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, but, you know, again, the, the thing that concerns me a little bit, it doesn't mean we can't push higher because we've pushed higher in the past through it, is the sentiment stuff. Um, and this is pretty much the epitome of it right here. You know, this is exactly what the market is showing us right now. All out bears to now to not all out bullish, but signs of it, you know, some signs of it. So we'll see, you know, where this thing heads for next week. Uh, anybody have any other questions that I may have ignored accidentally or, oh, win. Jenny's asking win. Um, I don't win. Here's the tough part about win. It's a name in the news. So I think like if you have weakness there, and you see flow into weakness, you have a, a trading opportunity there. I haven't seen any sweep in win that has made me say, okay, they think this thing is ready. You know, like Friday, I told you a lot of us traded the win. It was small algo sweeps, rumor, chatter sweeps about them going private, by the way. That was the chatter. That they may go private. Um, like most chatter may mean nothing. You know, another name that I didn't play that had chatter, Juniper. It actually had a nice move off the chatter right here. Actually, look, the chatter came in, there was algo sweep sold off, and then look at this move. But I didn't play it. So yeah, win win is tough. I don't, I'm not a big fan of names in the news too much. Um, again, because there's a lot of eyeballs, a lot of hands involved. You know, UPS. Um, we saw a small action there. UPS, I think they were weeklies expiring the same day. And um, FedEx, a little bit of action. But I haven't seen anything. What a hell. This thing got destroyed, huh? Wow. Wow. FedEx get hit like that too. That was off the Amazon news, right? Buff. Yeah, Buff was a nice one this week. Wow, Amazon. Yeah. So um, you got to be careful there. Again, you want to see really good looking flow come into that UPS because there was some heavy selling. Um, Buff caught some action, you know, had a big move, had chatter, had the works. Uh, a lot of us. They traded some people took it for a swing trade, end up selling it the next morning. Um, this was a nice one. This is buff doesn't catch a lot of sweeper activity. This is the second time I would say in the last year that buff has saw a sweeper activity um, and had a nice short term move. Actually had a big move last time. Oh, you know what was another name that caught um, uh, uh, some sweeper activity that I liked? It had a nice move too, though. That's why I didn't bring it up. Race. This too, another time. They bought, I kid you not, there was sweeper activity into this consolidation. I think they were they were far out there, Mays or August. Um, then you had this ramp. And then right here, Maria saying she played the race. Yeah, it was, I mean, they nailed this thing. Nailed it right here. And look at this move. You know, so if you play this thing, like like a lot of things, guys, like a lot of things last week, if you're looking at it for a trade off that race action, you got it. Um, I think the good looking sweep Maria in race, what was that? That was August. One of them had some decent time behind him. Do you remember the sweeps in uh, race? There were a couple of them. I think or July. So some time, uh, some decent time behind it. But yeah, like Maria said, that was a nice one. Um, Twitter, you know, I mean, we've seen action there. Twitter's, yeah, you know, I don't know what you want to do with it up here now. Twitter, for me, you need uh, something like this or some sideways action. Up here, I'm not, uh, I'm not too interested. Um, as you guys know, I posted on Twitter, 
the rare, clean bull risk reversal right literally a half hour before earnings, he killed it. Uh, then we saw more activity come into this day. But, you know, as far as a swing position from here, for me, it's I'm not excited. Put it that way. Uh, snap similar. Snap similar. By the way, there was, um, I don't know if it's going to have an effect on Snap. Hang on, I'll find it for you guys. I posted it on my Twitter. Where is it? CEO, what do you dump anyway? 50 million, but supposedly only 1% of what he's got. I don't know. May weigh on it and set up a trade opportunity. If they buy weakness, you know, quick trade opportunity. Um, but yeah, we, I mean, a lot of people traded this snap. The snap was huge. Uh, here's the snap. Basically, this is what happened. You guys remember off the webinars snap caught some really good looking sweeper activity for snap like Feb's Feb 23rd, one of those strikes, but legitimate sweeper activity. And they were early because this thing did nothing. It did nothing. They had earnings. A lot of us, I tried day trading it a couple of times. It did nothing. Uh, some people took it for a swing, try to catch a move before earnings. It did nothing. And then what happens as is usually the case, earnings blow out, right? So we were pissed, but the good thing is, uh, you guys know the story that morning they reported, um, Lucci was all over it. He loves this when a name like this has a blowout and catches shorts. So Lucci was eyeing this thing right out of the gate. And sweepers came in like a banshee right at the opening bell. Boom, 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 boom. And it was a nice day trade. Uh, so there's been there's been action throughout in Snap. Uh, a lot of stuff further out. I think May 20s were getting play and stuff like that. But as far as the spot, this is not the ideal entry here. You know, not the ideal entry in my opinion. Um, if you're interested, though, in the name off this little headline, if you get some weakness and you see some flow come in it, right? Let's say Snap is down a buck and change and sweepers come into that weakness. You could have that snapback trade there. So that's what I would be looking at there. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to I mean, you're going to need to buy time. Um, to be on the smarter side of this move. But the problem is, is again, the spot, the spot, any negative news there, you're going to have, you got room for some selling. Do they buy that is the trick. So that's what I would look for. That's how I would play snap. I would wait to see weakness and see if they buy it. It's going to tell you a lot about the strength of the name. Uh, yeah, JD uh, has been a nice one for us before late late last year. Has been a great stock of late. You got earnings. July on the race. Thank you, Maria. So it was July. Yeah, so a lot of time behind one of those race sweeps too. Oh, uh, yeah, so JD actually saw some action this week with everything else, but you have earnings. You got earnings coming up. You got earnings. There's still a decent number of names with earnings. You know, the underbelly type stuff. The big guys we got out of the way, but there's some other stuff with earnings. Uh, first, Solar. Uh, we saw a little sweep late Friday. They have earnings. They got earnings coming up this week. Uh, Kevin Walker is asking about that L. Is it out? No, LRCX, I think he's asking about, right? I get them confused too, Kevin. Lamb Research. Um, that was another ni a nice hit. I made some decent money on the day trade. Um, couple guys who like to trade the semis in the room made a score on this thing. They bought the one, what were they? The weekly 177 and a halves, I think, early in the week. It was right here. The 177 and a half, the stock was like 171. 
And look at the score they made there. A lot of people sold it too early. But they were, um, by the way, Kevin, what you're interested in, they rolled those out. So, you know, a lot of times you'll see um, Feb Action just close and they lock in their profit. So that's a good sign. They rolled them out to March. So thinking maybe possibly some further upside there. You know, that's that's another thing. Like the semis, you still have earnings in a lot of them. You know, I sound like a broken record. But, you know, if, if the rotation goes there, I mean, think about the upside potential there. Like there's no better group to buy out of consolidation or a sell-off of sweeper activity than the semis. There's nothing better. Nothing better. They're animals. You know? So a lot of these names, you got some time till earnings. Yeah, like Micron is the end of March. So you still got some time there. Um, so we'll see. Like if, let's say, hypothetically, some weakness early on in the week next week, and they rotate into the semis, you could have a nice trade there. You know, a little pullback. They come into them. These things can move. That's why we love them. You know, they can really move. You just, you don't want to chase this now. This is, you don't want to chase in any size. You want to fool around. You like names, that's fine. But you want to try to keep the bulk, even if you didn't make as much as you would have liked or wanted to. Whatever profits you made this week, the number one goal is to hang on to the bulk of them. You're willing to give back a portion of it, that's fine. You want to hang on to the bulk of them, all right? Maybe dabble here and there just in case this thing melts up or grinds higher and they do that runaway. It's a possibility. All right. But if you do get caught, you do not want to give back all this. It's a shame. You know, this is the setup, man. This is the setup. You know, and hopefully, here's the thing we're not used to this setup, guys, because we didn't have it for almost the whole entire year last year. These setups, they don't, they don't have to be as drastic as this. They come quite often. I mean, in what was it, 2016, these setups were around. You just, you got to wait for them. And the setup meaning, you know, there's some selling and some of the shorter term sentiment that moves so drastically is in our favor. And we get sweepers into that. That doesn't have to happen in, into panics. The panic was needed now because of this runaway at the end of the year that created so much bullish sentiment. We needed this. A little pullback would have not knocked out. They wouldn't have knocked out that bullish sentiment. No shot in hell. We needed this panic attack. Right? It makes sense. We needed that. We needed to knock the cocky bulls in the head to say, listen, it's not this easy. You know what I mean? It's not this easy. And if you get greedy and don't protect yourself and don't size down, you're going to get caught and give it all back. I'm telling you, you go back through time. These melt-ups where the market goes up every day and you got that euphoria out there, the pullback, okay, whenever it does come, washes this whole entire thing out. The whole thing. So my point is, if this would have went higher, it could have gone higher, who knows? Eventually, you would see this wipe that whole entire thing out. You know, that's why, from experience, trust me, from experience, when I tell you guys, I don't like to get nuts up here. That's why the inevitable is something like this is coming. And is this upside worth this risk? Right. Is the little more you're going to see an upside enough for you to take on this risk of this happening and you getting caught in? No. You know, as opposed to here, like I said, high probability chance the weakness gets bought. Because everybody's already positioned for lower prices. You know, this is the risk-reward setup you want. 
All right, boys and girls, I love you. We got a long weekend. Monday, no casino. What the hell are we going to do with ourselves? No baseball, no casino. I lose my mind these long weekends. At least if I got baseball, you know what I mean? I can entertain myself. I got something I'm interested. I mean, no action. There's no action. I grant that. I hang out with my daughter, hang out with the family and all that. But I need, I need some action around me. I need some action. You know, you go on Twitter, they're talking about Trump investigations and all the nonsense. Oh, yeah, the racetrack is a must this weekend, Greg. The ponies are a must this weekend. That's that's a given. I'm actually heading to the barn uh, to see my daughter ride after this. Uh, so I'm always interested in that. But, yeah, I go through withdrawals. You know, I'm not, listen, I'm not a shit. Olympics. I'd rather have root canal than just, I'd rather have root canal than watch the Olympics. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's too many holidays. Every just leave. That's the one thing I'm envious about the crypto. You know, I'm being honest. That's the one thing I'm really envious about is that this sucker is open nonstop. Huh? This is truly a degenerate gem right here. Yeah, maybe one day they'll figure it all out. They'll insure accounts. There'll be a, the regulations needed to be there. Probably won't be as exciting. Um, there'll be sweeper activity. And away we go. We could trade some crypto. But right now, I can't fool around with that. I'd rather go to the racetrack. I'd rather go to the racetrack. All right, guys. Good luck next week. All right, for members, I'll see you guys in the room. Enjoy the long weekend, and uh, let's see if we can uh, get a nice setup out of early next week. Be good, guys.